welcome again to the Lessud channel. Today's video is all about what you do when you start out and save the world. This video is mostly for people who are new to the game or have no idea what to do. The first thing I would like to cover is missions and quests. Missions are different kinds of zones you go into and complete an objective. These are all the types of missions. Fight the storm. Find the atlas, place it down, build defenses around it, and use blue glow to activate it. Blue glow is found anywhere around the map. In any zone. Then defend the atlas until the timer runs out to complete the mission. Ride the lightning. Locate Lars's van, build defenses around the van, and defend the van for two waves with both lasting around five minutes each. Each, each wave requires two blue glow to start. Retrieve the data. Find an airdrop in the sky, go to the landing zone, build defenses around the landing zone, and defend it until you collect all 16 data files. Do not, does not need blue glow to start. Repair the shelter. Locate the shelter, run diagnostics, locate the missing parts around the map, and build defenses around the shelter and defend it until the time runs out. Does not need blue glow to start. Next up is evacuate the shelter. Locate the shelter under attack, defend it until you kill enough husks, then build defenses around the shelter before the timer ends, signaling a final wave of the husks. Does not need blue glow to start. Deliver the bomb. Locate the armory in the launcher, collect four blue glow and deposit it into the armory to create the bomb. Build tracks from the armory to the launcher, defend the bomb while it travels to the launcher, then defend the launcher until it's ready to fire. Next is destroy the encampments. A search and destroy style mission that wants you to find encampments around the zone, which are beams in the sky, to fight off all the husks and destroy as many as possible while the difficulty of the encampments progressively grow. You have 20 minutes to destroy 5 encampments, but 4 more super encampments exist. You can destroy all 9 encampments and the mission will end before the 20 minutes is up. Build the radar grid. Locate and build three radar towers around the map with an optional two for a total of five every mission 20 minute long missions and the mission cannot end before the timer runs out rescue the survivors Locate six survivors around the map to complete the 20 minute long mission There is a bonus nine survivors to save and will earn you better rewards at the end of the mission Surviving all 15 survivors does not end the game early eliminate and collect a survival style mission where you must eliminate a large number of husks and collect their data samples within a 10 minutes time span. Killing more husks than the required amount will give you better rewards at the end. Resupply. Farm resources in any zone while collecting supply boxes and a 10 minute timer to complete the mission. Refuel the home base. Fortify and defend siphons for a total of three waves per siphon. One wave is equivalent to one tank of blue glow, and you need six tanks of blue glow to complete the mission before the timer ends. Collecting extra tanks will grant you even better rewards at the end of the mission. Now for the missions that can only be completed that can only be completed by completing your storm shield defense quest line or slash quest line. Storm shield defenses. Fortify and defend your storm shields and amplifiers in s inside of your home bases. These missions will expand your home bases to a maximum of 10 completed defenses per zone. Six from quest line and four extras. Once you complete all 10 defenses, you are able to do a mission called Endurance. Endurances are 30 wave missions that attack your storm shield and amplifiers while each wave gets harder and harder. These missions require a minimum of 2 hours to complete as they are the hardest missions the game mode has to offer. Some of the waves even have extra challenges such as tornadoes, meteors, lava pockets, anomaly rifts, and more. Completing the endurances will grant you a special banner that you can use to flex on your material leeching teammates. Next is launch the rocket. Completing your quest line will allow you to unlock this mission, tasking you to fortify the rocket and defend it for three waves. Each wave requires three blue glow to start. Once the rocket is launched, you will be able to enter the next zone, Stonewood to Plankerton, Plankerton to Canny, and Canny Valley to Twine Peaks. 
under your daily quest tab in your quest menu there are quests that once completed you will earn 50 to 100 v bucks for each quest complete missions rescue survivors eliminate husks etc mission alerts mission alerts are mission rewards that once you complete the mission for the first time you will earn those rewards but you may only earn the mission alert rewards once every mission daily mission switch normal rewards given upon every completion and this right here would be the mission alert where it says like the little clock and then rewards above these and now on to profile leveling completing missions will give you xp leveling up your profile and giving you very helpful rewards every time you level up activating xp boosts will allow you to level up faster and the max level is 310 but you can go above that and it will still give you extra rewards Next up is research. Research is where the game collects research points for you over time, either online or offline. It doesn't matter if you're on or off. While completing missions and leveling up enough times, it increases the rate of points collected. Doing research to upgrade your fort status increases your power level significantly. So, which just means upgrading these. The max level for each is 600, and once the bar fills to 10, and then it goes back to zero and it'll give you a very significant power level boost. Upgrades. Leveling up will every so often grant you upgrade points you can use to get better gadgets, storage, and damage. All gadgets are Adrenaline Rush, restores life to you and teammates. Airstrike um, drops bombs in a chosen drop zone. Banner heals player built structures and acts as a respawn in case you die hover turret is just a stationary hover turret proximity mine i think you know what this does slow field makes husks load in a small range supply drop drops the player helpful goods and teleporter is just two teleporting pads for you and projectiles along with gadgets Tools can be upgraded as well. Backpack size, which just increases the number of items you can hold at once. Building repair speed increases building repair speed. Building increases player built structures health. Pickaxe damage increases harvesting tool damage. And storm shield storage, which increases storage space. Note, all upgrades require you to be a certain account level. So just going back here, you need to be a certain level like this in order to do research, even if you have the points. Next up is survivors. Survivors range from common to legendary rarities. They're used to heavily increase power level overall. And if you want to learn more, I have a video on this topic and you'll see on the top of your screen right about now. Next up is heroes. There are four classes of heroes. There is Ninja, which have abilities like Shuriken, Smoke Bomb, Dragon Slash, Kunai Storm, etc. And then there's Soldiers. Soldiers will have Lefty and Righty, Shockwave, Frag Grenade, War Cry, uh, Going Commando, which is a minigun, and whatever. Next is an Outlander. Outlanders have things like Seismic Smash, which they punch the ground and it does a little shockwave that hurts husks. Shock Tower is just a tower that shocks enemies. Phase Shift is where you phase forward a couple tiles. And after that is Soldier... No, sorry. Constructor. Constructors have things like Rosie, Decoy, Plasma Pulse, Bull Rush, and stuff like that. And... Collecting all types of heroes is a very good idea. All heroes have certain bonuses that they give when equipped into your hero loadout. Hero loadouts consist of a commander and five other heroes in the support team along with a team perk. Providing varieties of boosts, ranging them from ability damage to magazine size increases including having two gadgets equipped to, which is at the bottom here, like Airstrike and Adrenaline Rush that I have, and multiple loadouts can be created at once. Another good use for heroes are expeditions. While the significant of players don't know that expeditions exist, uh, they can be started 
at any time, while better rarity and higher power level heroes will significantly increase the chances of the expeditions to succeed. You may also check the durations left on the expeditions in this page right here, and uh, they will reset frequently. And you can cancel them at any time. Starting expeditions use collected research points, which I showed a little bit ago. And now for schematics. Schematics come in rarities from common to legendary, while mythic rarities, we mythic rarity weapons will be explained in a near future upload on my channel, which I'm probably going to upload in like a week or something like that, maybe. And schematics can be collected through vouchers and ventures, completing certain event quests, buying them for the item shop, using gold, which can be collected from mini reward llamas, completing missions, completing quests, and leveling up adventures. Schematics are used to craft weapons in the main campaign outside of ventures. Leveling, leveling up your schematics make your weapons stronger. You must, f you must use forge items to craft weapons in which the materials needed are shown in the crafting recipe. Schematics will also have perks that provide a, v a variety of bonuses and elements. Fire element is strong against nature, water is strong against fire, and nature is strong against... Uh, fire is strong against nature. While physical is strong... Oh, sorry. Nature is strong against water. While physical is strong against elemental and non-elemental husks, and energy element is strong against all elementals. Just like Battle Royale, weapons use different types of ammo, using forged items to craft ammo by either holding the, re the reload button or going into the ammo tab in your inventory menu. Perks can be upgraded with Perk Up and Reperk, making the perks on your weapons legendary is called God Roll. And you can also change the perks on your weapons by using Reperk or this perk down here, which is called a Core Perk. And for that, you use a core reperk, and you get a core reperk from Ventures. Now we have Backpack. Your Backpack is an inventory, the fraction next to the word Backpack that you can see, 220 out of 240, is how much space you're using and the amount you can hold at once. You can click and drag any weapon to one of these three slots, like that, or that, and those are the weapons that you can hold or use at the given time and you may upgrade the amount you can hold by upgrading it in the upgrades tab like i said earlier on top of that the amount of building materials is increased whenever you travel the new zones by increments of 1000 so like just this right here and you meaning by new zones again is like stono to plankerton plankerton to canyon etc and storage is your storm storm shield storage is simply a place where you can store your items for more space or to use them at a later time like i said earlier upgrading the amount of storage spaces can be found in the upgrade page and now for one of the best features of the game which is known as the collection book the collection book is a dictionary of all here of all heroes survivors traps and schematics while putting them into the collection book will give you a variety of good rewards every time you level up. I'll leave a link to all the book rewards in the description for you to check out after watching this video. And while being able to put items in the collection book, you may also take them out using V-Bucks too. Along with that, you may also take items out of the book without ever putting them in using Flux, bought in the item shop, or gained from leveling up in the collection book or completing quests. And you can also use vouchers, gained from ventures. And you may also level up the items in the collection book for even more XP. And now for resources. This is this tab simply shows the account resources that you own. You'll find the kinds of XP and how much you have, perk up, Evolution materials, and those are used for upgrading items from tiers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And you will also find gold, flux, and event tickets. Note, flux is used to upgrade the rarity of items. And these three things right here are what flux are. And now for the llama shop. 
This shop has three different tabs, X-Ray, Loot, and Items, which are right here at the top. And the X-Ray tab is where you can buy llamas for extra loot to help you boost your account. The llamas in the tab switch daily, and the Loot tab shows all the llamas that you own and that are claimable. But this is where you just have event tickets, and then once you get 500, you can buy it. But many llamas are stuff that I can claim at any time. And um, event items are items you can purchase with gold. And the weekly items can be bought with gold too, but they reset every week. And the store tab here looks simply just like Battle Royale, but it's just where you can buy V-Bucks. And instead of like Battle Royale, you can buy limited time promotional packs. These packs can be used to purchase the game, and they can give you special items to help improve your gameplay, like heroes. Um, sometimes they'll give you schematics, like traps or weapons, and the heroes also do good too. And then you can also use those heroes cosmetically in Battle Royale. Now what you're looking at is Ventures. This is just the event that's going on right now. Ventures doesn't always look like this. This is just the type of Ventures season that we're in right now which is scurvy shoals and ventures is a type of mode in say the world where you don't have your schematics besides traps and you can only find guns by buying them at a vending machines or foraging chests leveling up in ventures gives you superchargers vouchers and other useful items you can see on the top right here this is a weapon voucher and this is just gold and uh Va sorry, superchargers are used to upgrade items past tier 5, and vouchers are used to get items from the collection book. And one weapon and one research vouchers per venture season, while leveling up and completing ventures quests, you will gain multiple superchargers that will significantly help you out. Like survivor superchargers, they can bring you past level 131, like what I am in the main game. Along with some extra notes here, uh, you need to constantly upgrade your power level to play higher level missions. Uh, you must complete your campaign quests. Completing Storm Shield defenses give V-Bucks and more slots for survivor squads. Obtaining certain heroes grants you new team perks. Mini Llamas are gained from helping people with their Storm Shields and event tickets are used to open llamas and get event schematics and heroes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It took me days to make this video and it took me hours to write this script. As what I have here, I have about 13 pages of stuff that I wrote. And uh, I'll leave a link to my Discord server for future further questions and help with Save the World. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell too. And if you have any ideas on videos I should make, please drop a comment down below. And I'll see you guys later. Peace. She never got out of your car. She never got out of your car. Lee? We're not saying that you did. Anything. I'm trying to find her. Where is she? I didn't say you did. I don't anything. know where she is. Well, we can prove that you.